Welcome to Chapel at Washita, where we seek to deepen students' spiritual lives, to broaden their cultural appreciation, and to realize their roles as part of the Washita community. We hope that you'll worship and enjoy this chapel experience with us today. Welcome to the first week of online chapel. Normally at the first chapel of the year, we all gather together in JPAC for our traditional convocation. That first chapel is important because it marks the beginning of our academic year and it helps us root our year and our community in faith. The faculty are usually dressed in their full academic regalia and the entire university community is in the same building. We sing the university hymn together and we talk about our university's mission, vision, and values, the things we hold dear as a community. We can't replicate convocation online or recreate in-person chapel completely. But we will continue to fulfill the mission of chapel this semester by bringing speakers to you from different walks of life and by including students, faculty, and staff in these weekly videos that we hope encourage your faith. This week, President Sells will be our main speaker as he normally addresses the whole campus at convocation. You will also hear from Vice President Ian Kosh on the importance of the chapel tradition at Washita. And you'll hear a student perspective from Student Senate President Tyrese Allen. We will also enjoy music from the Washita Worship Group directed by Joel Winters. Each week, we will conclude our chapel with a benediction. This week, Dr. Deborah Root from the Rogers Department of Communications will close our program. Spiritual life at Washita is multifaceted, including life groups, student-led worship, as well as community service. We hope that online chapel this semester will be a part of your spiritual growth as a member of the Washita community. Good morning and welcome to Chapel at Washita. Each week you're going to be challenged, encouraged in your faith, and I hope you'll come to chapel with an open heart and an open mind, ready to be inspired. Let me share with you three reasons why I believe chapel is important. First, we're a small enough community to gather together as an entire community. That's not possible at larger universities, so that's a privilege. Second, as a Christian school, we believe in developing a faith that seeks understanding. We believe that the journey of faith is a lifelong process, and at this critical time in your development, we, leave, we believe that God will mold and shape you in ways that will benefit you for your entire life. And then thirdly, Chapel reminds us that what we have in common is so much more important than what might divide us. We're called by our Creator to see His image in each person and to celebrate that we're not alone. God is with us by His Spirit, and He often makes Himself known to us through others, by their words and by their actions. So let's worship and enjoy each other's company. Welcome to Chapel. Hello and good morning. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Tyrese Allen and I am your 2020 through 2021 student body president. What a pleasure it is to be standing here before you today. Today, we start a new year here at Washita Baptist University, a new year full of a whole host of fun and exciting memories. Although this year may be strange and hard to navigate, know that here at Washita, we believe in family, and we are a family that dwells in the presence of Christ. Before I leave, I'd like to leave you with a scripture. If you would please turn with me to Psalms 31, verses 23 and 24. Love the Lord and all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. While these are troubling times, take peace in the fact that we know here at Washita that the Lord is our Christ and Savior. And for that alone, he'll make sure that we'll take, we are taken care of. As always, it is a great day to be a Washita Tiger. This is my worship, this is my offering, in every moment I withhold nothing, I'm learning to trust you, even when I can't see it, and even in suffering, Lord I have to believe. 
If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. I don't want to follow my own ways. I'm done chasing fear. Welcome. With Convocation, we inaugurate the 2020-21 academic year. It's our 135th year as a community of students, faculty, and staff doing Christian higher education together on the campus of Washita Baptist University. Chapel is vital, and in more normal times, it's important to gather weekly as a university family. It's so essential that I seldom miss chapel. 
And I so look forward to when we can reassemble together every Tuesday in JPAC. Three years ago, I began using the university's vision and mission statements to emphasize an annual theme, to help us focus on some key Washita outcomes. We take these statements seriously. They're the foundation of your Washita education and experience. Normally, we give a patch with the theme to all students, faculty, and staff after convocation. This year, you got it in your welcome bag. I wear my patches on my backpack, and I can't help but smile when I see students displaying their patches. So now, as I have in the past, I want to use convocation to introduce this year's theme. My remarks aren't comprehensive, but are intended to help us begin a year-long conversation. So this year, I'd like to spend a few moments talking about reasoned engagement with the world. So by the end of this academic year, and certainly by the time you graduate, this Christian university intends to prepare you to be better, to be more skilled at reasoned engagement with the world. So what do we mean by reasoned engagement with the world? Maybe it's helpful to think about it this way. We came into this world ready to learn. For most of us, our five senses went to work absorbing every data point. We heard voices and noises and responded to human touch, seeing faces and light and tasting and smelling. And that deluge of sensory data rolling through our operating systems hasn't slowed down. Welcome to reality, our senses told us. And keep telling us to this very second, there's a lot of reality to grasp. And the Christian faith asserts that this reality is God's reality. It's God's world. We consume information. We relate to people. We try new things. We have experiences over and over again. And it helps us understand and respond to the world. To say it another way, when we talk about reasoned engagement with the world, we mean the reasoned judgments that each of us make about all the information in the broadest sense that comes our way. Let me use another example of how we go about gaining reasoned engagement with the world. But let me give you some context. As a 16-year-old driver, my father took me on a trip and then let me drive on the interstate for the first time. While he was awake, I was too nervous to pass another car. But when he fell asleep, I passed my first car. I pressed the accelerator and I felt a surge of confidence. Now it was easy to pass on an interstate. I had two lanes on my side and there was little traffic. However, I also had to learn how to pass a car on a two-lane road. And that particular engagement with the world requires much more judgment than simply passing a car on the interstate. So now with my story of being a new driver as the backdrop, here's an example of reason engagement with the world. Imagine you're driving on a two-lane road back to campus. You're trying to make a meeting, and you find yourself behind a logging truck. There's a lot of data to consider. The truck's going slow. There are cars behind you. You're about to enter a passing lane. In the distance, you see a car, and you're trying coming the opposite direction, and you're trying to estimate its speed. You might think about the skill of the truck driver and the car drivers. You notice it's getting a little dark. You've got a friend in the passenger side and you're wondering how that friend's going to respond. You look at the clock and you realize you're running late to the meeting. And maybe you think about previous experiences of passing a car and perhaps you even recall your parents saying, drive safe. So you have so much information. And then that moment comes, reason engagement with the world. Do you pass the truck? All those experiences and decisions over time hopefully lead you to being a more skilled driver in that critical moment of engagement. Now, this example may be too simple, but I think it helps us understand the way reason, our intellectual judgments, help us engage effectively and appropriately in the world around us. So you may be wondering, if you've been doing all this reasoned engagement automatically, what's the point of college? I recently heard someone explain it this way. All sheep run away from wolves, but sheep don't get together and have conversations about it. 
In other words, sheep won't be in college this fall talking about their woof issues or their strategies for escape or how sheep historically or theologically have considered their fears or how they might scientifically assess the pros and cons of each option for escape. But you and me, we have the capacity to reason. Reason our way through judgments from data that come our way both in our lifetime and in the long history of world. And we have the capacity to talk about those judgments, to engage in a serious and deep examination of all such reason. So we come to college to mature in our ability to reason. At Washita, since 1886, we believe developing reasoned engagement with the world can best be realized in a tight-knit Christian community where we live and learn together. We've purposely created an environment where students are given time to think, have conversations with those who have thought much longer about something than we have, listen to friends whose lives have given them very different data sets than we had growing up, experience high-impact educational opportunities, and much more. During your college years, your time studying, learning, talking, writing, exploring, questioning, and serving will help you form more precise judgments about the data that flood our lives. When you grow in your ability to reason, you will also grow better at thinking about the realities of our world and become better thinkers about the God of the universe who created it. We believe it's essential to Christian maturity, of living out, of being more faithful to it, getting better at loving the Lord with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind. Your mind matters to God. Scripture tells us, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. But there's more to this part of our mission statement. Reason engagement with the world it means we have to learn how to move towards active participation in reality. Or said another way, all of our thinking leads to active engagement in God's world. We need help walking through the flood of data and potential experiences that come our way. But we also need help walking through the tangle of ungodly systems and malicious forces that oppose God's rule and reign in this world. In the same way, intellectual engagement with God's world must include being more faithful to, getting better at loving our neighbor. We fail profoundly when we think right thoughts, but live with no regard to the poor, the marginalized, the lonely. As James reminds us in the New Testament, thinking brilliantly without doing good makes our faith worthless. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we accept the kingdom call to do all that we can to make our world look and feel and be more like heaven. Chapel helps us in this process. Washita's vision and mission statements leave no quarter for the separation of faith and reason. The Christian faith and our reason are never truly in conflict. There can't be something that's true according to our faith and at the same time false according to reason or science since God is the source of all reality. There may be things we do not yet understand like COVID-19 and there may be things we never understand like why a parent abuses a child. But we work toward a reason engagement with all the realities of the world. We take its injustices and its sorrows and its viruses as legitimate areas of studies. Even as we do biology and business and study the works of Charles Spurgeon and Martin Luther King. And as we do, trusting that truth is never subjective or purely personal. This is our Father's world and its realities are ultimately bound up in Him. As Christian scholars... And I believe, students, you're scholars. We refuse to be skeptics who claim that faith can't be proved. We also resist those who say that all we really need for reason and engagement with the world is to study the Bible. This is why you will take Bible courses at Washita, 
but you will take core courses and courses in your majors and courses that interest you. And it's why we make chapel required part of achieving a diploma. Faith and reason go together. So at the beginning of this academic year, once again, let me welcome you, students, faculty, and staff, to a community of Christians who are all making progress toward reasoned engagement with the world. It's going to be a very different year for all of us, so challenging in so many ways. Physical distancing, mask, virus fears and virus opinions, a divisive political environment with an election, racial justice issues, global economic pressures. We're all going to need large doses of humility and grace with one another as we navigate this semester on campus. Most of you will vote in your first presidential election. You'll be challenged to think about racism and racial reconciliation. You'll wear a mask on campus and perhaps sometimes be surprised at how weary you are with the pandemic life. Yet, I can't imagine a better time or a better place to develop our capacity for reasoned engagement with the world. What a providential time to emphasize this piece of Washita's mission. God's given us an incredible laboratory this semester in which to learn He gives grace upon grace to the humble and willfully resist the proud. Washita, may we rise to the occasion by submitting to Him who humbled Himself for our sakes to the point of death on the cross. And may God dwell in our hearts and minds with all the fullness of His glory and grace. Let's commit to walk together in the way of the cross and find within it the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. As we think about our theme this year of reasoned engagement with the world, it reminded me of the words a student shared with me at the beginning of last semester. She talked about how she felt called to be more present. And we should be more present with those around us and in the world in which we live. As we face the uncertainties of this new school year, I'm so thankful for our God who gives us hope. I want to leave you with the words of Paul in Romans 15:13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.